All right, my friends. What do we do about Da Silva? Let's roll. Before we get started today, my friends, shout out to one of our returning patrons, Joe Bridgman. I'm not sure how this works, Joe, but you went from US dollars to British pounds. It works out either way. They do the the exchange, I guess, on the Patreon side. I just thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, what, 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 what is happening here? That's odd. Um, how was your original pledge in dollars? But anyway, did you move? I, I'm really... Joe, leave a comment for the, for, the, for the people. Leave a comment for the people. Did you move? We want to know. And he also came back to the Discord community, which is I am really enjoying. If you are not part of the Discord community and you're like, man, I'm in the comments a lot on the videos, that's fantastic. That really helps the channel. But there are a ton of people in Discord having conversations all the time. We've got channels set up for Formula One, for Fantasy Premier League, which I'm trash at. Um... No comment. Um, I hit the mute button. It's hard, you know, in a season where, you know, players are randomly going out for two week steps away from the club. We're not going to use any of the words for the algorithm. Um, but it's, it's, it's fantastic. Like we've got people talking about their own saves. Um, what else? Do, what, what else do we have? GHG? Can you, can you convince me more? Um, we have an upcoming series thing where I'm asking for your opinions on what we should do in FM 21. I already have some ideas. I'll be putting out a video relatively soon about that. Um, and there, there's a Liverpool channel because primarily because Pekka Wickman and maybe like two or three others and myself when Liverpool are playing are screaming at various players in discord. Pekka primarily with Divock Origi, me with Trent Alexander-Arnold. Fantastic, but some his, sometimes I feel like Trent's decision-making is like you roll a d20, and sometimes it's a 20, and sometimes it's a nat 1, baby. Let's go. Um, so welcome back, Joe. I know that was random and long, but check out the link. It's, it's, it's fantastic. So if you're like, man, I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing in the comments. I want more of that. Hop on in. Hop on in. We had a ton of comments last time, as you noted the delay in getting this episode out to you. Um, lots of people giving their thoughts on what do we do with the Silva. Um, oh, before I go into that, because the first comment I was going to look at is from Old Lady Play. So there was an announcement last week on Twitter. I am uh, part of a YouTuber invitational that Dodgy Gamer, who has also been a supporter of the channel in the past, and my favorite series that he has done on his channel is the International Man of Mystery, where he like takes over for Tonga, um, like the smallest international uh, club. It's like an international journeyman. Fantastic, really love it. So he he has brought together some YouTubers to say, hey, wouldn't it be interesting? And I'll put the link in the description of this. I, I can't remember if I can put a link externally up at the top. It's, it's been a while. Yeah. I, could I put one up there? I don't know. Um, either way, it'll be in the in the description. And he said, well, you know, you've got like your draft leagues that, uh, you know, some of the big names are doing on Twitch and stuff like that. But what if you could take your current team and your current save and play it against somebody else's current team and their current save? And so that's what he's done. He's invited 12 uh, content creators. I'm one of them. And you, you essentially... I didn't even know this was the thing. I learned a lot in the last couple weeks. You come up to your squad screen and you export team for versus competition. And it'll literally export your current squad into a, a file. And then you can go into FM Touch and load that file and do a versus game against an opponent. So I am in that, uh, that tournament. We are in the group stage. It's four groups of three creators each. I am in a group with Old Lady Plays and with Avoiding Relegation. So that, that that's going to be coming out soon. We are figuring out the best way to record because I've literally never done this. We're figuring out a way for, you know, us to record at the same time, share the video file, and sync up our audio somehow, right? Like, we want to be able to hear each other. So, like, we're probably going to do a, a Skype call or a Discord call so, like, you can hear the other person's commentary while we're doing the game. So I thought that was a, like, I really appreciate Dodgy um, 
inviting me i think it's a really interesting way to finish fm20 you know because between now and the beta it's like who knows when the beta is going to get here things get a little weird sometimes or it's like well you don't have no content but you want to have some co- i just thought that was kind of an interesting way of going about it so that'll be coming up um as by the time you see this video i have about a week to get my two group stage games gun done and then we'll see where we go although i do think it's a little unfair that old lady plays is our official translator on the channel so it seems like she has an unfair advantage she's going to be telling my players in their their native languages things to do that are incorrect on the pitch and that seems like an unfair advantage um but lots of comments on the last episode where people saying Hey, as uh, Old Lady Play said, uh, you know, as someone who plays with a lot of big clubs, I say go for it. You should be able to find a adequate re- replacement for 120 million or less, and that she'd be shot. Um, you know, Retro Gamer 1982 said, you know, you might push for a little bit more. I'm summarizing. I'm not going to read all the comment directly. Um, you know, Shinaldo said, depends on how how much longer you'll play before the next FM. My name's Just Rob. Said, <clears throat> ask for more money. If they accept by Aydin Gomesh, that is the attacking midfielder for uh, RB Salzburg, which I actually, I like that idea. He's, he said essentially said, avoid the replacements that have the DM, um, that like no midfield and DM, go for the one that knows the attacking midfielder because you've got enough midfielders and you don't play with a DM, which is actually really good advice. My name's just Rob. Thanks for being an assistant on the channel. Um, let's see. Jimbo said that... The, that the silver is so good they'll probably come back with a with a, an offer later if if I reject it and he's worried will the silver quote throw his toys out of the pram if you reject we'll talk about that Gordon Bell says the silver is unsellable like uh Kevin De Bruyne um Josh Brady same thing I'm worried about De Silva getting upset um Andrew Wood said, essentially, check your options, negotiate higher, and then take the final offer of $205 million, even if you can't get it negotiated higher, and, and buy some you know some younger prospects and give them a chance. Um, so, I want to address some of this. So, I've already, I can't remember if I, I thought I mentioned this in the last episode, I've already rejected a bid for De Silva. Remember, they came in with like 114 or 140, or maybe they did both, and I was like, nope, because the, the amount that was going to end up in the transfer budget was like, not worth it. However, he did come to me and be like, hey, hey. And so we do now have a promise to win silverware with De Silva. But I was kind of like, like, I mean, we're at the top of the table. Mm, let's just, I, I, hold on. I, I, can't, I can't, I can't remember. I can't, oh, well, yeah, we've won the last three seasons. <laughs> you know, like, yes, I'll agree to that. Same thing, uh, Ken Luce when, uh, what was it, uh, the, uh, Guangzhou came in, I think, for him. Um, he, he, he wanted the same thing. Or he wanted specifically that we'd win the league rather than silverware in general. So, I don't think he's going to throw his toys out of the prem. I don't think he's going to be upset because we already had that conversation. And... I do, I, I, I do like the look of Gomesh here. You know, he is right-footed. That's the only downside. It is. I, I, I love that that attacking or that advanced playmaker in the midfield role when we have to rotate is left-footed. That, that's kind of been part of the system. But, you know, we just play Contreras there. Contreras, congratulations. You're now a full-time starter, which you already were anyway. But it's also, you know, my only concern with this is that with all the add-ons and signing on fee and agent, like we're probably going to spend, okay, a hundred million. It says 74 to 101 million. Who knows how accurate that is. And only 114 is going to go in the budget. And so it's like, that's, it seems like a, a lot of disruption in the squad for a guy who's not as good right now. And like, we, we're probably going to play this season, maybe one more season. I mean, unless I'm really cranking on episodes. It just really depends on when the beta arrives, to be honest with you. But I just went, ah, that's not worth it. And so I'm like, well, let's let's try negotiating higher. And if they say no, cool. We've already worked it out with the Silva, right? Like, so how I think 
if you've got 157 million, like they, remember we looked at their transfers in, in the recent history and like they haven't bought anybody. They've got money. They've got money, I think. And I'm kind of looking at this like I'm going to act like the AI acts where it's like, oh, you got to offer me 200, 206 million. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask for 170 and then. Oh, it maxes out at 58. I'm going to ask for 228. I mean, I'm just saying, because, you know, you, what is that? That's an extra, let's just call it an extra 22. Okay, he's going to get a percentage of that. Let's call it an extra 15, I guess, or so, lands in our transfer budget. Well, now you're at 130 or 129 million rather than 114. That's off the cuff math and probably wrong. But, you know, if they don't like it, they don't like it. I know that seems bad. I, I, and again, if this was going to be something where we're going to be in the save for another 10 seasons, I probably would have taken the 205. Because you go like, well, we're probably not going to win the Champions League this year, but like, look at the bank balance. <laughs> right? But it just doesn't seem worth it here at the end of the save. And maybe that's not realistic. You know, like, would, would the club, would the board actually force it? But they haven't, you know? So maybe the board's like, we get it, man. We get it. We want to go win the Champions League, which... Um, there we go. Uh, I'm going to go play Cagliari and bring you back. Ascoli. I can't remember if we showed this last episode. Ascoli beat Pisa. We are playing a Serie C team in the Coppa Italia first round. And we're going to rotate pretty heavily. Oh, it's going to be a disaster. All right, my friends. Welcome in. Daniel Rizzo has shown up for Man U. Or did I already show you him? I mix the bench today. Has he made it? I guess he already made a substitute appearance for us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pedroli has had back-to-back -back colds. Like, literally, it's like one to two days and then three to four days when I send him home. I'm like, dude. Dude. Uh, Ken Luce is suspended today. Valentino still has not shown up. So, we've gone full rotation. If this squad can't beat the City of Chi team, I don't know what to tell you. I thought about even calling up some of the under-20s and under-18s, but I also want to make sure we're giving game time to our rotation guys, right? So... Israel Kufner and Mary Silva, uh, Yakupi, Arnaud Richard, Baganovic, Lorenzo goes back to back starts because he did cover for Pedroli last time. Hopefully he can be good, and then Pedroli comes back to play in the Super Cup in four days. Is it four days? Yes. Is it four days? Oh no, is it three days? Is he going to be back in time? It's three days. Why would you do that? Um, I've tried. To uh, playing Boateng a little bit in the attacking mid just to get up his versatility a little bit. Probably not the best idea, but I'm going to play him there because I want Bettini to get some game time at left wing. So when that happens, you slide over. Know your place, Boateng. Um, and then Fernando Finta from Man United as well uh, is, is going to get the start today. He's, you know, he's got seven starts, five subs, six goals for us in Serie A. Not bad. Um, is this guy Man United? No, it's Bayern. Sorry, I had my I had my loan loaned players uh, off there, and we've also sent out um, Valeri. He's gone on loan to Juve Stabia just to get him some game time. They're paying fifty percent of his wages. Is there anybody else of of note? Oh, Alex Flag uh, Fogliaza, who is I think going to be quite good. I mean, quite good, three star, but currently operating at a Serie Bay level. We loaned him to Antwerp, which is like random. But they wanted him, so come on down, and they're paying 300 a week. 20% of his wages, but he needed the game time. Um, Nicolini, I guess I guess that's new as well, has gone out on loan to Salanatana. Uh, they're paying us 50 grand, so it's essentially we're going to make 250 grand in the second half of the season here. But they're paying his wages, and hopefully it makes him a little happier. And hopefully he gets some pay. He's got five subs with us, and then with them... He's a squad player, so but it looks like he's making the bench, you know, just can he get into the game with a little bit more consistency than he got with us. He just wasn't quite there. Now, what has that done? Did I mean to loan out both of them? Yes, of course I did. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> ah. um, we still have enough players from a, a minimum training club country, yada, yada, yada. Well, let's show you the match preview. We're favored 1-8 to eight odds. You might be like, hey, why are you showing us this? It's like, because 
because we we need to win the game. I guess we do have an extra opening. We have an extra player. Let's go pick. I just uh, offered this kid a contract. Mateo Scatazotta. We've offered him because he's on 250 a week right now. Um, so he's going up to like 3.7 grand. Looks to be pretty darn good. Left footed. He can play the wing. Um, or the he's kind of like Bettini, except is Bettini right footed? I should know this. Yes. So that's the difference. Um, I guess I should add him to the team. That would that would be useful rather than just talking about him. Uh, yeah, that's how we go, my friends. I think this has gone. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I have to show you. I have to show you something. Let's go look at the goals. We beat Calgary 3-0. Joaquin with a hat trick in the first 32 minutes. Um, I think it was the second or third goal. It was just kind of like, what are you doing? Um, a couple of classic. At least one of these is a classic. Okay, yeah, this one. I guess it's the first one. Did you... De Silva's been in the papers... If you're Cagliari, you have no excuse to not be aware of where De Silva is on the pitch. This is their goal, okay? This is not a defensive throw. This is an attacking throw from Ibrahim to De Silva. When they th when he throws the ball, let's go back. There's not, what what is that? 10 yards? 15 yards here, maybe? There's no more than 10 yards of the best player on the pitch. What What is your defensive game plan? Throws it in, and then a classic. I love how Joaquin can get his head in the correct area. Ibrahim again, okay? Almost loses possession, sticks with, zaps it off the post, falls to Joaquin. Kind of a, you know, hey, right place, right time type goal. And then his hot trick finisher here can lose to Contreras, plays it forward to Joaquin. And then, I mean, he's kind of in a place shot down into the, the far right corner. Lovely stuff. I just thought, that first goal, I was just like, what? is what what did you just do what did you just do from a defensive standpoint and we are six points clear at the top my friends let's get into this game now that i've rambled off hopefully you're enjoying this i'm trying to mix it up with the content they've gone full on five three two that's not a three four two or whatever three five two that's a five that's a defense these yes yes slight differences pick up where you left off lads uh, I, love, I hate when it's like spaced out and you got to go pick all the ones that you don't want to talk to because they're already motivated. It's like group them together, you know, so you make, make my life a little bit easier. Um, yep, yep. Every time Paul gets the, the captain's armor, they're like, oh, I picked Paul. I'm like, yeah, remember the last time when I was like, yeah, like, he's, he, of course. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, uh, yes, he's played well. Good for him. Let's go, folks. Home crowd here. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Lorenzo Araldi. I'm, I'm happy for Lorenzo because, you know, there was a there was kind of that moment where you had Lothar and Lorenzo. Oh, I don't know if either of them are going to make it. They were both in, like, these rotational, you know, roles. Like the Minamino, Shakiri if he was healthy ever type roles. And he's just, he, he has just been a gem. And we sold Lothar. Lorenzo doesn't have the inconsistency trait that Lothar had, I think. Okay, heads it down. Finta blocked, my friends. I just want to see how our, our rotational guys do, right? Like, th this is maybe the difference over a couple seasons ago where you get a game like this, and, and honestly, I think our under-20s could have handled this as well, but, um, you know, you have those games in the season where fix your congestion and you're like I really need to play I, you know, we, usually I'm not doing a full on 11 rotation I think I've learned my lesson there um, I think we can get a, get away with it again with a Serie Chi team today but you know we now have the depth where if Paul needs to play Paul's a darn good right back right um, Lorenzo can come in and he's a darn good anywhere in the attacking third player right um, easy peasy there we, we, we've got those loan prospects, right? Finta and uh, the Bayern kid that we just brought in. Right? So, like, we have those options where it's not, um, I mean, to be fair to Thomas Brogy, when Ken Luce goes out, we have Richard and not Thomas Brogy. Not that there's anything wrong with Brogy, just not at the same level, right? So I'm pretty pleased with the, the, the depth increase that we've had, right? Like, I don't think we have 
vastly increase the number of world class players. Right? Ibrahim has turned out to be a very good buy. Obviously, De Silva we knew would be a really good buy, and Colombani was homegrown, right? But it's not like all of a sudden we've got seven, you know, new world class players. The biggest jump for the squad has been the uh, the, the Contreras, who turns out to be a star, the Richard that we get get on a free, the Paul Kufner, the Vigil Yakupi, um, those types of players, like. Ricardo Silva, right? Investing in that third center back role. A Mary. Of course a Mary. Let's go, my friends. It's 3-0. We, we might get some uh, Signorini in here today, methinks. Me um, who else could we get in here? Scatoza. Scatoza. Say it fast. Those are probably my two subs that I'm thinking. A little right back action. A little strike action. A Mary. Oh, I was hoping for a merry dream, you know. We we gotta we gotta keep a merry, keep him going, full steam. Silva, Ricardo, it's four 0 my friends. So let's talk about so you, so you don't click off this video because you're like, mate. Let's talk about FM twenty one plans. Um, beta, whenever that comes out, I'm trying to actually plan my time off from work around when I think the beta will come out. I think if the, if the game is supposed to come out on the 24th, which is a Tuesday, it's the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, thank Sports Interactive for ruining Thanksgiving in the United States. Just saying. You're killing me. Um, I think it's going to be either... Typically, the beta comes out at least two weeks in advance. Now, they may be doing some stuff because of... Um, the world situation where maybe it's not going to be the full two weeks, right? It could be a week and a half. But I'm imagining in the U.S. it comes out around Thursday evening slash morning because of the time difference. Um, two and a little bit before, so whatever that day is, right? If, if it's supposed to come out on the 24th, I'm kind of banking on it coming out on... Okay, two weeks before the 24th would be the 10th. So... Like, the 5th, 6th, that weekend, that Thursday, Friday weekend. Um, or, potentially, the 12th or 13th. Either way, I'm, I'm like, planning my, my, my days off from my actual job to be off on Friday the 6th and partially on the 12th and 13th. Um, so, I can try and put out some content. That's, you know, welcome to being a content creator. Like, that's literally happening. Um, so, the beta is going to be in England. Um, I might actually do a little, like, double. I'm not sure. I really have an interest in the international game, which it is not nearly as popular, um, with anybody that watches Football Manager content. I, it's just something that I prefer. So, what I can tell you right now is the main beta save is going to be a club in England. Uh, probably from the top two levels. I'll give you that much. The, uh, I, I'm, I'm considering, depending on when the game comes out and how much time I have available, investigating the international stuff with Norway because of Erling Holland. And that's just neat, I think. Um, so I can, I can give you that tidbit today. And then let's go make a sub and bring on this guy. And then this guy. Um, and then from a main save standpoint, not ready to announce it just yet, but it is going to be elsewhere in Europe. It's not going to be an English club. In FM21, and I'll probably admit, do I put another video out about this? Probably, because no one's, not nobody, but like, it, this is hidden within this video. This is, this is for you that are here to watch a Mary almost score a goal, um, in the 72nd minute. Um... I might change my content strategy up a little bit this year to where I'm doing, I'm always going to have a main save, like a long-term, this is what we're doing save until we achieve whatever we want to achieve in that save, if that makes sense. Um, let's bring on this Rizzo kid. Sure. Um, but... I'm going to have some experiments. That is definitely coming back. And I will, I, again, I'm going to put out a full video that kind of explains all the stuff that we're doing. Because a lot of times I involve my patrons in the experiments. I kind of drop the ball aggressively. Um, oh, I was going to praise uh, an FM20 with that. 
just kind of got a little burnt out and overwhelmed. Um, so that's always going to be there, but I'm thinking also of doing some like, you know, shorter hits, um, because that's what a lot of people watch is like, let's take a look at, I don't know, not PSG, but PSG is an example. Like, let's do two seasons with PSG. Something like that is what I'm kind of considering. But I already have my idea for my main save. I have a fairly good idea for the main beta save. And then I'm probably going to do international with Norway just because I find that. I want to see if they've changed anything with the international side of the game. After you see this video, there should be another one coming out, which is going to be... Hold on, let's take a look at my list. Two videos of five things each I would like to see change in Football Manager. So make sure you stay tuned for that. <sighs> we get enter, because of course we do. At least we get through the first round with a heavy rotation squad. Okay, so now we get enter in the Super Cup. I'm not going to show you that. Roma in eighth, Torino in twelfth, enter <laughs> in third, enter in the quarterfinals. <laughs> <laughs> but cross your fingers right we have leading up to psg 19th 9th 16th 18th then psg Sampdoria 6th spal 11th sosuolo 14th psg lazio so like the scheduling has been kind to us around these games now of course that i'll say that we'll have like a bunch of people on injuries and colds and sickness and whatever um but next episode i think we'll do I really want to make a cup run. I think we'll do an extended highlights quarterfinal. And I know some people like that. Some people don't. But I like the the not knowing if this is a real highlight coming. And, oh, man, I really want to make a cup run. I really do. I really do. Um, as noted, this is where we stand. We are 11 points clear of Inter. We are 6 points clear of Juve. We are 16 points clear of AC Milan. So it's going well in the league. We just need to essentially right now watch out for Juve and maybe a little bit with Inter. That's a six-pointer with Inter. Um, but if you've enjoyed this episode, my friends, make sure you hit that like button. Um, subscribe if you're new. Uh, yeah, Man United have been in the papers. I haven't seen anything in the papers from Arsenal, but, you know. Yeah, is what it is. Go away. Go away. I want to keep my player. See you then. Oh, 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 oh. I hope you were here for this and you are still sticking around. The draw for the Coppa Italia has been rather kind to Reggiana. Matching your side against Inter, a considerably weaker opponent? Is that an assessment you agree with? No. They're in third. Go home, journalist. You've had too much to drink.